We are Mortgage Pros 411 with my co-host, Kevin Casey. I'm Audrey Boisno, and we are joined today by our lovely guest, Laura Brandeo. Hi, Laura. How are you? I am fabulous. How are you guys doing today? You're always fabulous. I love that about you. I am. Why would I not be? Right? I mean, everything's perfect. What could be better? Nothing. Obviously. <laughs> But I think well, it's good... actually, I disagree with that one. Every day we can get better. Yeah, well, we'll talk about that for sure. Um, with that being said, I just wanted to briefly mention that it was Veterans Day and we all celebrated. And we just want to say a big thank you to our veterans and their families. The families are a big deal too, because without them supporting the people who have to go away, um, you know, we've got nothing. So thank you, thank you, thank you to all the veterans and their families. We really appreciate everything you've done for all of us. Um, also would like to say that if you are a juvenile delinquent and have not yet completed your NMLS training, there is a live class, a live online class on Thursday being taught by yours truly. So if you need to knock that out, um, join the other mil bazillion people who haven't done it, who are going to be doing the class on Thursday. So it's through Mortgage Educators. Um, so let us know if you need to have the sign up link. Yeah, and a little caveat on renewing your NMLS stuff. Um, we're noticing that there's a lot, a few more steps being added to the process for some of us uh, where we have to do like credit reports or background checks and stuff yeah. like that. And it takes a little bit more time than just taking the class, paying the your fees, and then you're done. No, they're like, no, you have to do some extra steps. And sometimes those extra steps take a week or so. Yeah. So well, and that's a great point, Kevin, because the um like I needed to do a criminal background check. So I it which require fingerprints, right? So yeah. I go to get the fingerprints done, and I thought that getting that done would trigger the background check. And what I realized is it doesn't they don't they don't start the background check or the credit report or whatever until you go in and renew so thank god i did that like on november whatever it was and um got that process started so you want to make sure that you are on top of what do you owe them before they'll let you renew and get it done now because that waiting thing is not working out <laughs> so um do not be screeching into the finish line on december 31st praying to god that it's going to be okay because it may not be we don't know so just give yourself some time do it now don't wait for goodness sake okay i feel like there could be a like a christmas song that has something to to do with that so um all right so next up on the agenda we have this little mortgage pros 411 crystal ball contest going this is kevin's favorite thing if you want to see him light up and get excited and tell you everything just ask him a question about it um with that being said we have given away a bunch of hints you can see the previous show um especially on youtube if you would like said hints um, Kevin, There's more hands to come Kevin, 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 you could say one thing right now. One, choose your. Well, no, I'm saving that, that later in the show. What? So, most people don't realize that there's so many guesses within a guess. Um, you know, you could guess that the new conforming limit will be, let's say, seven ten, but what's the amount? And then I'll show you. Oh my goodness. Okay, really? You're going to show yeah, us? I'm going to show you. I'm telling you, he has so many spreadsheets and Excel things going on. And like he's analyzed the crap out of this over and over again. So, Kevin, you have 10 seconds. Hurry up. Hurry uh, up. No, it's taking longer than that. But here, oh, that's a shame. Here, okay. but, I, but I love this, Audrey. I mean, the fact that yes. you guys have taken this topic and made it something of a discussion and a game. I mean, I think this is a testament of how we all need to look at our industry, right? That's because right. so many times we're kind of just sitting there and we're waiting and, and we're anticipating it, but you guys have made it so that now you're strategically figuring it out. Yep. All right, Kevin, what do we all have? Right, so what do we have, Kevin? Let's let's just say, for instance, you picked uh, 715, the, the, that crazy number that a few lenders came out with. But it's never exactly 715,000. They, they, they round to the nearest 50, uh, at least historically they have. What about and, when it was 417 for like 10 years in a row, Kevin? Yeah, so there's actually 20 different possible answers within the, the same number. Um, so you get 715.050. Um, you know, it can go 100. Now, the interesting thing is I did a little chart. The blue numbers are um, 
independent guess or numbers that have come up in history. The orange ones are when a number is repeated. So uh, we were stuck at 417 for 11 years. Um, so the 000 was kind of stuck. There's 11 digits out of that, but even then it's still the most common number. 700 is the, the second most common number. And then 150 uh, comes up quite a bit. So it's 250, 300 and 100. The interesting thing is that it's never been anything over 750 until you get to zero, zero. And they, you're they, talking round up. they also tend to round down to the zero, zero, zero. There's no so 50, so just a little hint there as to what the last three digits. Okay, yeah, just to be clear, he's talking about the last three digits. Yeah, no. <laughs> okay, Nelson Otero saying, Kevin, you have way too much time on your hands. With that being said, I think that was an awesome chart. So um, <laughs> that was really great. Okay, just to remind you, because we're noticing that people are sending you more than one entry. We, we are tracking like when the entries come in because um, they show up with a timestamp on them. So whatever your last entry is, that's the one that will count, okay? And remember, we are talking about conforming loans. I may or may not have seen um, a guess with a, um, with a billions in it, which may or may not be correct. So there you go. Yeah. So it's baby conforming. There's a, there's a better name for that, Laura. I can't remember what the heck it is. But anyway, the standard conforming, not high balance. And um, and Linda, Lynn, if you're putting your guests there, you got to do it through the entry form. So, oh my God, let's talk about our website for 10 seconds, okay? We have a functional website. On it, you can register for, um, to subscribe. You can register for a show. You can click on the last, I don't know, six months of shows and it will take you to the recording. I mean, it's amazing. So again, Thank you to our good friend, Jason Bellevue, has just been unbelievable with, he put the YouTube channel together. So you can go to YouTube, you can look at them, you can go to our website, they connect, it's crazy. So we're continuing to make things better and you can enter the, Chris, the Mortgage Pros 411 crystal ball contest there. And so get your entries in. And if you want to change your mind, that's okay, but we're going to take the last one you send in. All right. Laura, any thoughts on uh, that? I'd actually love to ask a question. Maybe you have covered this before, but Kevin, you've actually, honestly, you've done so much research on this and I absolutely love it. And like I said, this is so exciting to me. In all the years I've been in the industry, I have never seen someone take this type of analysis on this. So please tell me what factors go into this? So and comes, don't give away all the answer, but uh, I just want to understand it. So Ch Case Schiller, numbers come out every month. Uh, they believe they come out around the 22nd of the month. Um, so the numbers for September come out on the 22nd of this month. And um, what happens is, and I learned this from Barry Habib when he was talking about inflation numbers and tracking, you know, and how the annual inflation number is, you know, you add up all the monthly inflation numbers and you roll the previous months off, you add the new months, and that's how you come up with inflation. Well, they do the exact same thing for the percentage increase in home values. So when the case chiller number comes out, the September number for last year is going to fall off and the September number for this year will be added on. There so you, you can guesstimate, okay, well, the number that's coming off from last year is going to fall off. You know, it was about 1%, as I recall. And then, you know, the number is going to come on this year or this time. So you're guessing how much did the market move from August to September? And then you take that percentage for the total year, you times it to, you know, one and a half, one percent plus whatever that percentage increase is, times and times last year's conforming rate. And you're gonna get somewhere in the $700,000 range. I don't believe, I think whoever did loans at 715 is gonna be hurting for a while. Um, <laughs> Audrey says it is still a range okay yeah that's so, good. and the other good thing we talked about this for the show um the high balance conforming limits is gonna be a problem um yeah it's because the high balance limit in high cost areas will be over a million dollars based on the worst of these numbers and that's a problem for these areas because jumbo lenders typically do not uh, lend under the conforming limit they, so that they can meet with compliance rules because they don't want to be 
charged with, oh, you're discriminating or something like, no, that we do everything over the conforming limit Correct. and that's it. Well, the problem is, is in my market in San Francisco, a lot of times a jumbo loan is a better loan than a conforming loan for our market. And now I am having not to be able to lose that number. So in beginning in January, I won't be able to go to a million dollars, like if I had a million dollar loan amount, I'm going to have to go jumbo. I mean, I'm going to have to go conforming with conforming. it. And there's limitations with the conforming on the high balance, especially with the, um, the um, loan limits as the pricing gets too expensive. Yeah. So well, I think, again, shop your lenders on that, your investors, because there are some that will go below. Some will. Some will. And some I, will, I mean, some honestly, will I, I've said a number of times, I haven't done a high balance loan since they raised the loan limits last year. I'm doing everything under jumbo because the rates are better. Better. So mm -hmm. it is. Um, so just watch that, guys. It's going to be a thing. I just want to quickly make a note about the crypto um collapse, mm -hmm. which has been interesting just because we've talked about it a number, a few times on here. And Elliot, our good friend, Dr. Elliot Eisenberg, our little PhD economist, um, he posted this in his uh, daily, what do you call it? Blog thing. Blog. Anyway, <laughs> if you want to subscribe to it, it's a, uh, you just, um, yeah, we've showed that, we've shared that, but it's Elliot at graphsandlabs.net. He'll add you to his list. Um, so anyway, he said, once the third largest cryptocurrency exchange, FTX, recently declared bankruptcy, it's hard for an honest exchange to fail. FTX wasn't. It lent billions of its customers crypto to a sister firm to use the borrower, borrowed crypto to make failed bets. Once this was discovered, the crypto involved, as it has no real value, instantly became virtually worthless. As there were no government backing or regulation involving crypto, these shenanigans are probably legal. I thought that was probably the best little synopsis of what happened with crypto that I've seen or heard. So um, I thought I'd share that just briefly, just in case it comes up for you. So let's dive into the next thing. Okay, we're just going to keep focusing on Kevin, on his favorite things today, which one of them is shipping. So one of the things that we enjoy doing as we're crossing the Bay Bridge is looking over to the Oakland side to see how many shipping containers are out there, right? So here's- is it looking what, better? It's, yes. So Cast Freight, which um, does an index, which I have now subscribed to just for the record, um, there's less shipping and shipping costs are down. They're saying 5%. I was talking to somebody who works at a shipping company and he was saying it was significantly more. And that was just last month, by the way. So like since the beginning of the year, shipping costs are down. Inventory levels are higher than they have right. been. Things are easing a little bit and we're starting to see a break in our inflation number. So let's just talk about that for a minute. So the first thing we got last week, which we had all been praying for and hoping for, for months and months and months, was consumer price index, CPI. So the headline number went from 8.2 to 8%, and the core went from 6.6 .6 to 6.5. Okay, so that's positive. And then our good friend, the, the Fed, Janet Yellen, comes out and said, don't get too excited about that, which she's got a point, but I don't know, for me, the Fed has lost a little bit of credibility when it comes to their inflation analysis. We don't need to go into that today necessarily, but um, today we got the producer price index, which is measuring wholesale inflation, and that too came in better. It was projected to be up 0.4% and it came in at 0.2%. So we are seeing an easing of the inflation numbers, which is what we've been waiting for, and that's two in a row, which is good news. We're, we're hearing the inventory levels are up. We're hearing that companies like Walmart are um, deciding that, which I'm not a fan of Walmart, but I actually like this part today. So maybe I'll have to ship that a little bit. Um, but they decided that they're not, they're pushing back on some of the higher prices and they're saying, we're not gonna buy those products. We're gonna find alternative products. So the more that we have that kind of pushback, which I've been wondering how that would work itself out, the better things might get. So with that being said, it's still volatile out there. So don't take your foot off the pedal with regards to vigilance and always remember that we can lose more than we can gain in a much in a short amount of time right um but i think it was interesting because we had an unbelievable day on the market last thursday i've never seen uh, after hours trading we were up 206 basis points it was uh, remarkable i don't, I don't yeah. think i've ever seen as that that big a move 
me neither ever you absolutely. laura no absolutely it i mean and then, and then better. you're going into veterans day right? right like the timing of all of that as yeah. it was happening was incredible yeah. That was, that was really remarkable. And it was so, I mean, I was kind of watching it because Monday, what do you expect on Monday? Well, it was interesting yesterday because as often happens after we've had big, huge gains like that, it pulls back a little bit, yeah. but it wasn't a huge difference in the rates. And that's because those lenders hold back when they've got huge changes on in a day, right? So it's interesting to see it. And then today, you know, we've kind of been dabbling with it's up. It's well, last time I looked a few minutes ago, it's still green, but it's a little up and down. It's not going to be a straight road, better or worse. It's going to continue to be, you know, we'll have good days and bad days. So just stay the course and make sure that you're watching it. Laura? Absolutely. I totally agree. And, but you know, Audrey, it, it's interesting. We are having this conversation before we actually went live and we were saying that so many of us were sitting there and we're watching the market and we're making these decisions on our business based on the market but you really have to be mindful that that's not how we run our businesses that's you right. have you have to look at this as a big picture so of course we need to focus on what's happening right now and we have to make strategic moves based on what's happening but you can't sit there hoping that a number comes in bad and saying, oh good, a number came in bad. Now my business is going to That's be right. okay. This has to be something that as entrepreneurs, all of us are entrepreneurs. It doesn't matter if you own your business or not. If you're right. in the mortgage business, you think like an entrepreneur. As that, you need to be taking in all this information. You're in the right place right now. You're listening to this right now because you want to stay on top of the market. You want to know what's going on and you want to be educated for your borrowers and families and partners you're serving. But at the end of the day, this is not the strategy. You need to actually take this information and apply it to right. your long-term strategy. Gotcha. And you know, I know we're speaking a lot about numbers and here's an interesting number that I want to throw out, okay? Because we were having this conversation earlier. You know, the number of loan officers, licensed loan officers that are currently licensed right now. Okay, so here's an interesting one. So in July of 22, there were 276,000 loan officers, and I'm rounding up the number, in the market. Only 188,000 of them do more than three funded loans in an entire year. Okay, so wait, think wait, about wait, wait, that. Wait, wait. Hang on. Okay. July of 2022, there were how many? There were the exact number is 276,837 loan officers licensed. Okay. Uh huh. With 188, 264 doing three or more in a year. Holy moly. Okay. In uh -huh. 2019, it was very close. There were 263, 494 licensed loan officers with 180,713 doing three or more. So you are almost back to pre-pandemic numbers. Wow. Right now. Well, this reminds me very much of the headline, oh, foreclosures up 185%. Yeah, from a foreclosure moratorium, right? So again, you have to go back to 2019 to really get a clear idea about what we're actually talking about. Exactly. So I'm really curious to see at the end of 2022, how many loan officers actually renewed um, I also think it's fascinating because we thought there was this huge influx of people coming into the business in, in the 2020, 2021. Yeah. And uh, apparently that is incorrect. Um, there was not. I mean, really, if you went from 263 in 2019 to 276, that's remarkable. Correct. I thought that was such a fascinating statistic because I was surprised by that. I didn't right. expect that. But to your point, the amount of renewals, it is going to be very interesting to see yes. how many people did not renew. Exactly. And just said, and we were we were having this conversation. How many people have you heard say, I'm gonna just wait it out? Yeah. Yep. Oh, I was telling Laura about a friend of mine who, I mean, this guy's been a hype producer for as long as I've known him, decades. And he's just he's like, I'm just watching. I'm like, okay. But Laura and I were talking about how important momentum is. And so this idea that we're going to take a break and just sit around and wait till it, it, no, we've talked about how you should be doing your 2023 planning now and starting those ideas now. Why wait, right? 
what are you going to do? What is going to be different? There are people closing loans right now. Who are they and what are they doing? This idea that there's no business is incorrect. And yeah. so what are you doing to be proactive? And we talk about that a lot. I mean, we've done a little bit of shifting in how we present this show just because we wanted to give people some real ideas that they can use in their business um, as now, like now. But again, right now. I think a lot of people got very complacent when loans were falling from the sky like rain. And that's not a healthy place to be, frankly. It is. And so as far as business planning, and again, we're speaking to ourselves too. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. it's not, we're not just saying, oh, you're not doing this. A lot of us aren't doing this. And so it is time for sure to be looking forward. And also if we have reached sort of that tipping point as far as the market goes, where we might have things settle down just a little bit, that would be, I mean, now's the time. Get your borrowers in there. Yes, rates are still up, but you heard last week when Kevin Pranio was talking about the MLS um, data analysis saying there are so many buyers who are on the sidelines waiting. And actually, I read this really, really great article about how um, how is it going to be in 2023. And the things that I thought were the most interesting was John Grauman. I don't know if I'm saying this right. He's with Grauman Rosenfeld Group in Beverly Hills. But he was talking about how, um, okay, so we've got the sales of previously occupied U.S. homes in September fell for eight months in a row, matching pre-pandemic levels, and that the interest rates are going, you know, people are expecting the market to fall off the cliff, right? And he, his, what he said specifically was, a lot of people think interest rates are going up, so housing prices are going to fall off a cliff. That's actually not what's happening. No. And so what's happening though, is that even though the number of sales have decreased as mortgage rates have gone up, home prices are still rising or holding steady in most of the United States. And mm -hmm. sellers are less motivated to sell, right? Because they're in a good position and they're not gonna be in a better position when they move typically. So with fewer properties on the market, it's helping push the prices higher, even in a slowing market. So with that being said, do you know that new data shows, I thought this was fascinating, single, of course I'm a nerd, so whatever. Uh, new data shows single family existing home sales prices grew in nearly every measured metro area, 181 out of 185 in the third quarter of 22, 2022, according to NAR. So it's what people have been waiting for sort of is a wave of new inventory to help balance the market. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news. It's not coming. That's John. No, it's Grumman. not coming. So this is, why do we talk about this stuff? It's so you can help your clients understand what's really going on so that they don't get spooked by some of these stupid headlines that pop up endlessly. Yeah. So I had, I had this exact situation. I had a client making an offer yesterday and he wanted to come in. It was a basically a $700,000 asking price. He wanted to come in at 650 and I go, you're wasting your time. You're wasting my no. time. You're wasting the realtor's time. I, you want to, do you want to buy the house? You can, I'll show you how. And um, I walked him through it and I said, you know, the one thing the sellers are doing right now is you got to come close to their ass, their price. Yeah. You can get away with a huge credit. You can get 2%, sometimes 3% seller credit towards closing costs. And that, and you use it with the excuse of, hey, I need the rates are high. I need to buy down the rates so I qualify. And they, sellers are falling sucker for that that little yep. tactic. Um, but it's working. And I've had a couple of people go into contract. Now, the other side of that coin you know, is, and this is what I'm hearing from lots of loan officers, keeping them in contract is a nightmare right now for most loan officers. I can get them in the contract, but God, it's, it's the smallest little thing. They're, they're pulling out a contract. And it's such annoying. It's like a who's a one old loan officer talked to you, Audrey, or said, I might as well just go on vacation because I'm working for free all the time because I'm getting people in the contract, getting their approvals done, and then they don't close. But I think because they're afraid. Is that why? The sellers, yeah. The buyers are afraid. They're they're that they think there's a better deal coming and that they can just come back later. Yeah. I yeah. think, that's and I think, that, I think the point has to be made. That isn't uh, that is no. probably not the case. Based but, yeah. on everything we're seeing and hearing, that is not going to happen. It's going to get worse, not better. In mm -hmm. terms of price and availability, et cetera, this is actually a really good time to buy when people are spooked like that. 
And yeah. again, remember the numbers we were talking about a few weeks ago where cancellations are not that much higher now than they were a year ago, which I was shocked by. Oh, that's interesting. That's, the, that's the, interesting because that's way, not what you're hearing. That is not what you're hearing. So apparently last year in the height of everything just being crazy, crazy, there were still 15% of contracts being canceled. 15%. And now we're at like 24% or something like that. That's not a low number, but it's not as bad as it makes it sound when they're like, oh my God, it seems like everyone's can't. They're not, not everyone's canceling. The other thing that I'm seeing is an issue is appraisals. And I've heard from two separate realtors recently in my area. One of them was doing a loan with First Republic. And so they have their panel of appraisers. And the appraiser decided that he was going to do a $30,000 hit across the board to all the comps for time because mm -hmm. the comps were from like July or August. So there was not a $30,000 $30, drop, right? Okay. So the realtor who works with me, who knows all about rebutting appraisals, because I, you know, we've done it before. Um, he calls me and he said, Hey, what do I do? And I said, you know, I mean, all you can, the, the, loan officer was like, there's nothing I can do basically. So had no idea that there should be tools in his toolbox to rebut that. And then when the realtor pushed him, he did go to the panel. So the panel apparently chooses this panel of people are the ones who choose what their panel is going to be. And then they're the ones who would do the reviews. So they reviewed it and they told the realtor, yeah, we agree with you, but we're going to stick with that value because if we get audited, we're worried about what might happen. Like maybe it's not enough of it. Like we're not sure what we'd be able to fight it, you know, effectively, whatever. So in that case, guess what? In both of these cases, as a matter of fact, the buyer came up with a $30,000 gap wow. anyway. And then another one yesterday, same sort of thing where this appraiser goes in and this one was from Chase and they went into the property and they there were cracks around the door frame, right? Well, it's Contra Costa County. Everyone has cracks around their door frames. This place is like 76 years old. We just had an earthquake three weeks ago. Come on, we were we on show earthquakes constantly. It's not a big deal, whatever. Anyway, um, so he comes in and he he comes in like 40 something thousand dollars low and calls for an engineer report in the appraisal. And the engineer came out at for a thousand dollars, by the way, that the buyer had to pay. And said, it's fine. Everything's fine. Like, this is a great property. Absolutely great. And so, again, guess who had to pay the difference? The buyer. The buyer. So, we have, if you've got 181 out of 185 markets that are either the same or better, you're not having price declines. And what the person who's suffering in these cases are the buyers and the ones who can afford it. I mean, and the good news is in those two situations, you don't have bad comps out there then, right? Because if there was some big price reduction for no apparent reason, other than the appraiser is getting it wrong, then there's an issue. So again, we don't, you know, you've got these larger institutions and they have their own little appraisal panels that they use and they're not the same as a good AMC. And so be careful. Okay, my long-winded message really winds up right here. Be careful of who your AMC is and help your realtors understand there are huge differences between lenders and the AMCs and that that should and could be something they might want to consider when they're choosing offers. Okay, yes. that's a lot. But, but also, Audrey, let, let's go back to the initial part of this discussion where we spoke about the fear in the marketplace, the misconceptions, right. the things that the fear mongering from yes. the news medias and everyone else. When we speak about what our strategy is for 2023 and beyond, it's not yep. just 2023, it's beyond that. Yep. This is the conversation. This exactly right here is, is what all of us need to be doing within our communities to yes. educate our partners, whether it's our realtors in regards to the AMCs and our lender partners, or whether it's in regards to our consumers and our borrowers and families that we're helping. Because right, right now, there is so many misconceptions out there that we have to take that stance. We have to be those leaders and thought leaders within the marketplace. Because if we're not, everyone is thinking, oh, I'm just going to sit by and I'm going to wait for everything to crash. And then there's going to be all these foreclosures. And there's gonna... what? No, that's not at all what's going to happen. The delinquency numbers 
just came out. And once again, they're extremely low right, right. now. Right. Now, on the flip side of that also, okay, we spoke about the personal side. Now let's speak about on the other side. I am seeing a lot in regards to cash outs and the ability to borrow on that equity. So we don't want to lose focus on that too, because there is still a huge opportunity for that. And just so everybody understands, the credit card debt right now in the United States, it, it's at some of the highest numbers we have seen. Yeah, so just keep that in lowest. mind. Yes. Yeah, during the, the pandemic. Yep. Okay, so up. it was up 25. It's really funny. I have actually have that written oh, down. Oh, you got that. Okay. I do. $25 <laughs> billion dollars increase in September. And since the beginning of the year, it's the highest surge they've ever seen, which That's means right. people are dealing with inflation by yeah. putting it on a credit card. And remember what credit cards have? Limits. And so at some point, you can't do that anymore. And now you're in trouble. And so to Laura's point, look at cash out refinances and also get them done because yeah. the LOPAs are changing. Thank you very much, FHFA. So they're going to get worse for cash out refinances and explore different options because maybe the, the agencies aren't the way to go. Right. In the, right? Sometimes it's better to, um, to look at maybe portfolio options or non-QM, et cetera, et cetera. Or even now, private money. It's amazing. It's actually oh, cheap yes. compared to- Really? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wow, and by the way, it's no longer hard money if you um, you hurt their feelings if you say that. So it's yeah. private money now, just to be clear. Just want to make sure. Okay. So, yeah. We had a, a really good presentation on it to, at San Francisco Peninsula Camp uh, on Thursday, and they were explaining how the investors who put their money into private money loans, that they want good returns. Right. Yeah. They're not looking. That's to the make, whole point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're not looking to make, oh, I want to make a killing on my monthly thing, but I might lose my principal. They, they want to know that they're going to get their money back and yeah. that they're going to get a decent return on it. And they're good with seven, eight percent. Yeah. And look at, you know, conforming loans are seven and eight percent. Yeah. So, you know, like, oh, wait a minute. And so you don't have all the hurdles. You don't have to order appraisal. Don't have to have all the underwriting fees and all that stuff. It can actually, and Audrey had a case where it turned out cheaper to do a private money loan yeah. than if she had gone conforming. Yep. Right. Yeah. It's interesting. Do not put yourselves in a box because when you're doing that, you're putting your clients in a box. So we've, we've discussed this where we need to broaden our thought process so that we are exploring all these different options that we haven't thought of. I mean, the world is more than Fannie, Freddie and a paper jumbo. It just is. And so for all of us, we need to look beyond what we have been accustomed to, used to, I guess those are the same things. But the point being, you, we, a lot of people got stuck in a rut, right? And so you don't want to have that be who you are because that's not the market. I mean, the market is, you know, very complicated borrowers a lot of times situations don't that don't fit into the little box and be the resource when somebody goes to one of the bigger institutions and gets kicked back i mean i just had a, one of my clients who is oh my god he's so strong he went to fremont bank oh shoot maybe i shouldn't have said that anyway whatever he went to a large bank that you'll forget i just said and tried to get an increase in his equity line and they kicked it back and they wouldn't do it and i mean he's mm. got i don't know a million dollars in equity okay why not well, you don't really get a good answer because, you know, you've got 55 layers of who knows what. So I called a buddy over there to see if there's anything that could be done. But, you know, I mean, the average person doesn't have somebody to call and, you know, intervene on their behalf. And so, again, be a resource, be there when your clients need you so that and be willing to work a little harder. Think outside of the box and don't float in, you know, in no taking breaks right now. That's, I mean, that's yeah. what I think, Laura. I think you agree. No, I, I totally agree. And I love all those points. And even the discussion and Kevin for bringing up the private money. Yes. These are the discussions that we need to have. So many times to your point is that, you know, we just get used to, okay, you know, the same lenders, the same programs, the same borrowers, same partners, you know, all that. And we get comfortable. And that's yes. normal. That's us as humans, right? But at the end of the day, we're doing a disservice to everyone if we are not constantly challenging right. ourselves to say, hey, maybe with the LLPAs and maybe with all of the required um, 
documentation and everything else that we have to go through, maybe there's a better route and a better right. way to go about it. And the other right. thing we didn't mention about those credit cards that are happening, we're also at one of the lowest saving rates ever happening right now also. So that is another thing <laughs> that's funny enough. Tom, Tom wants to be part of your class. Um, that's another thing to keep in mind is that you also have to be aware of what programs are available in terms of that DPA um, capabilities and different right. things like that, because the savings rates are also very, very low right now, but we know it's a great time to purchase. So we need to be available on that too. Okay, so actually this is a good time to mention, we are starting, I've talked about it, we've talked about it a number of times, we're finally doing it. We're starting on December 1st, um, it's going to be called the down and dirty in 30. And so we're going to do a, you get in 30 minutes. We'll have somebody come on the Tuesday, a lender or a vendor come on the Tuesday for like a minute or two, just to give you a little idea of what you're going to get on Thursday. And then on Thursday in 30 minutes or less, they get in and get out with what they've got to show you. And it, there are some new programs that are out there. I mean, I'm hearing from lenders there. I mean, it's not just these buy downs, by the way, which are not for everyone, believe it or not, um, even though the the ver the word on the street makes you think it might be. So, but again, you've got to do your homework for each individual client. What works for them? Look at all the different options. Don't, you know, just get out of the box that we've been in, right? So, um I love the down and dirty and 30. The down and that dirty is and 30. So, that is so important and everyone needs to tune into that yeah. because sometimes we don't even know what options are out there because, right. you know, we're stuck in our little box of what we're used to. So thank you for doing that. That yeah. is really great. Yeah. So if you're a lender or a vendor and you're interested in that, there is a place on our on our website where you could like ping us or you can just email us at info or Audrey or Kevin at um, mortgagepros411.com. So we are like, this is getting real. We're actually getting it together on the back end, believe it or not. So we're able to, now that the basics are actually functioning properly, we're able to like work on some of these ideas that we've had for a while that we wanted to bring out that I think will be helpful. Um, I just wanna briefly talk about lenders going away. Um, we've discussed this a few times. A number of weeks ago, Kevin and I had this, um, we had this chart of, it was actually a rate sheet from what year, Kevin? Was it 1982 or? 82. Wow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And it was so old school, Laura, you would have loved it. Oh um, my God. Was, I don't know if I've seen one from 82. Oh my gosh. You'll, <laughs> we'll have to send you a copy. It's hilarious. So basically it's a one pager for, and all these lenders are listed and all the rates were like a million percent. And we were talking about how out of that entire list, only three of them still exist in wow. some iteration or other. And so not to be freaked out, like the whole market is not going to go away forever. It's just not. There are people who come and people who go. With that being said, don't celebrate when, you're, when your competition goes away. It's not a great thing. And we don't want lenders to be leaving the market willy-nilly because it's not good for the overall health of the market. And so, you know, and there are there are some folks out there who have taken a scorched earth approach, in my opinion, where, you know, they're, they're not gonna be happy until everyone else is gone and they don't have any competition, but that's not good for the market because then at that point, it's no longer the lowest rates. They're gonna jack them up and they're gonna charge everyone to the gills. And so it's better on the broker side and on every side to have more op options. And so, you know, try to support those lenders who have that even keel approach to things, really support the lenders who are committed to staying in the business and just know there are new people coming in all the time. It's happening. We're seeing new lenders pop yeah. up and, you know, but we hope and pray that the ones who have been strong, we hope they make it right. Yep. No, we've seen some pull it off. We, there were some we thought weren't going to make it. They're, they're stuck it out. So far, so good. Yeah, there were some that we were very concerned about. It seems to be, um, um, it seems to, I don't know, we'll see. I mean, it's early yet, but there we go. So um, we have somebody asking about which um, index we're following, and it's the case, uh, case CAS Freight, C-A-S-S -S Freight. Okay, so you can Google it and find it. It's interesting, really. Again, if you're a little nerdy, so um yeah 
And if you need a credit check or a background check with M NMLS, somebody was asking this, um, NMLS probably sent you an email. If you were, <clears throat> some people, you might've missed it. But for the rest of us, we saw it and got our stuff done as fast as possible. So make sure you're checking your email, but uh, log into the NMLS website. Just go there. And by the way, don't be afraid of them. Just call them. I mean, they walked me through. They're, all the super they they're are, actually, they're, very, they're actually they're very nice. They really nice. For a government entity, they yeah. are like the friendliest people you've ever talked to. Oh my yeah. God. I actually asked that poor woman who had to talk to me for 400 years, whether she was drugged, because I would need medication to stay that calm walking th through all that tedious crap. And so they're wonderful. Don't be afraid to call them. Okay. All right. Um, all right. So what else is going on out there, Laura, that is top of mind for you? Well, what are you seeing? You know, I, I, I want to hear, I want to just piggyback a little bit on that lender discussion that you were just having, because that really is an interesting discussion, especially on the wholesale side, what you were saying, right. where, right. you know, we are, we're looking at, you know, earnings reports of some of the publicly traded companies and stuff. And you're seeing, you know, the losses that are occurring and you're seeing that it's, deliberate. The, I mean, some of the pricing initiatives are deliberate of your people are doing loans, making no money or being in the red, just with the intention of putting other people out of business, you know, and it's, it's very concerning to your point. It definitely is very concerning. And I appreciate everything that you've said, because it is difficult from a lender standpoint to say, we want to serve the marketplace, but you can't do loans in the red. You just right. can't, no matter how much you want to help people, you just yeah. can't. And to your point, you need to be able to provide different options. And every lender provides something special to the marketplace, whether it's a particular product or service or technology or connections and relationships or their community that they serve. So you're right. That field has to be filled with a wide variety. Otherwise, we become a monopoly, right? And that doesn't help our consumers. So we certainly want that to happen. Now, on the other side of things, though, when there are cycles, there's always going to be a certain amount of shakeout, right? And yeah. that leaves an opportunity for other people to emerge and kind of come from the rear and move forward. So we certainly also want to encourage that. And that is part of that evolution within the industry. So that's, that's exciting. Like you said, new people coming onto the scene and innovating, even the private lending and allowing people to come in and kind of take their place within that. So it is an interesting time. Um, and for all of you out there, this is a time for you to also emerge. This is the time that whenever there is this change within the marketplace, this is where you can kind of jump ahead in leaps and bounds. So this really is a, a great opportunity. So it's it good. is, but it's just a huge reminder. Okay, so these cycles, if if you're, it doesn't matter where you are in the mortgage world, you need to have some sort of long-term business strategy, Correct. right? So, and it needs to involve things like, I don't know, capital reserves and making sure that you, I don't know, maybe don't buy a Ferrari when you're making the most money you've ever made. And you're not, you know what I mean? Cause even if you pay, let's say you really killed it and you paid cash, you still have to pay insurance on that sucker. I mean, yeah. a few years ago, I got a wild hair and thought I wanted a Maserati because, you know, they were cool and they went fast and, and, um, but the insurance was stupid. I'm like, I'm not doing that. So anyway, it is plan for the future and do it so that you are not dependent on one type of loan only. And yeah. you are not, you know, make sure that you are prepared for these lean times because they come. They We're do. all cycles in this business. It's just cycles. That's it. You so be ready to pivot. You know, always. Right. right. Which always. is something that is a characteristic of the average loan officer that is really great. We're really good at pivoting. I think that this took, I mean, a lot of people by surprise. And I mean, well, it happened fast. It that, did. That I mean, was the thing is that this was quick. It was. I mean, it was hard for all of us. I mean, all, all of us were blown away by how, and it was the uncertainty and the volatility. Mm -hmm. That was the worst. I mean, if you pop from three and a half or 3% to seven, okay. And then it was even keel and it just happened overnight. <laughs> all right. You'd work that out. But oh my God, it's been like a torturous 10 months, right? 
So we're getting there, guys. We are going to pivot into a different um, <laughs> into a different market oh my god that's funny you see dirk? that is funny <laughs> okay he, dirk is saying that he's made the word pivot into a drinking game and i think <laughs> i would go to that party for sure so it is um yeah he, it's right though like you have to be able to pivot and you have to be able to think outside the box and come up with new strategies you have to have strategies and then you have to, and if you don't have your own it's fine that's take okay. someone else's figure out what's mm -hmm. working for someone else and that's why we yep. talk about so many different things right because you know, it's not a one size fits all yeah no i i think i was saying that the, when i was doing the private money thing um last week one of the um audience members was saying that he's having his best year ever yeah see yeah now he either yeah. is having his best year yet ever or he's a big fat liar it's one of those i don't know which i mean it could be the second but me, but I am hearing from people that they're doing great this year. And so it's, it is, you know, focusing on your referral partners and they don't all need to be realtors. So again, yeah. think outside the box, go to events, meet new people, like get out of your office. We've joked action. about this for almost three years. Take get action. Up, yeah. Get up, take a shower, put on clothes that don't stretch and leave your house. Go meet humans. That's it. Face to face is zoom thing. It's only good for Tuesdays at 11 to 12, you know? Well, actually, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow, Laura's got her own little uh, thing going tomorrow on NAM. Yeah. NAM, that's correct. So that's Nam, 530 Nam. Eastern time. Yep, that's right. So what, what time is it? Uh, 2 o'clock? 2.30 2 Pacific. Okay, but, but do not forget that we have people listening now from one end of the country to the other. So we all have, we have to remember not just to say the Pacific time, right? Okay, yeah. so 2.30 well, Pacific, at three 2 for the Eastern, Eastern time, okay. If you're in between, figure it out. And what are you guys going to be talking about, Laura? So that that is actually all about branding yourself uh -huh. and being your unique self and creating kind of a buzz about who you are as a unique individual and creating that within the marketplace. And, you know, it, it's interesting what you were just saying about the best year ever that somebody had. So I was at MBA National in Nashville a few weeks ago. And while I was there, so many people were kind of down in the dumps. To be quite honest, half the people were asking other people for a job. That's what was happening at, at the conversations. And that, I want to tell everybody out there that we, we spoke, I'm going to say pivot there, Dirk. <laughs> there you go, another drink. You know, so many times we have those conversations about pivoting and strategy and everything else. But it also starts with the way you look at things. If we wake up in the morning and we say, it's so hard, everything's so difficult, you know, man, there's nobody out there, everybody's canceling their contracts, the, the, the appraisers are now killing my values. If we focus in on all of that kind of stuff, I promise you, that's exactly what's going to happen. Right. So I really, really just want to encourage everyone out there that what you put in is what you get out. Take yep. action to Audrey's point, you know, get get ready, get up, get out, start speaking to people because the more contact, the more action, the more things that you're doing, the more it will result. I can't necessarily promise you it's going to result tomorrow. It may not happen tomorrow, right. but I promise it will happen. Whether yep. it's one month, three months, six months, two years, whatever it is, if you don't start today, you're not going to have it tomorrow. Yeah, that goes right into what you're saying about planning for next year. Uh, most people who are really good, they start their planning for the next year in October. And it's that way, by the time that the year hits, your plans have already taken a place and it's already working. So on January 1st, the, the, the results are starting to pop in versus waiting to January 1st to change. And then you don't see the results until February or April. Um, so. Right. In other news, I'm going to start working on, we've been talking about getting certifications too and taking this time to educate yourself a little better. And I am, now I'm on the NAM board now and I need to get my NAM certification. And so a few months ago, I threw it out there to um, the group and said, if you'd like to join me in that quest, we can work through it together and push each other over the finish line. And a bunch of us got our certification that we had bought during COVID 
but never completed through MBS Highway, the Certified Mortgage Advisor. So we got that done. I'm going to start working on a NAM certification in the next day or two. So if you want to join me, just ping me, Audrey at MortgagePros.com, and you um, we can do it together. It helps to have a buddy and all that. Um, so anyway, um, so that's another thing. And then, Kevin, you were going to mention. Um, oh, yeah. So, uh, Laura, on your show. So we also have a question on how to, how to watch your show. So just go to nam.org NAM. and then click on the calendar. And then we also have a good friend who is doing a presentation the same day, John Rice uh, or John Wise from um, Angel Oak. He's been on our show a few times. Uh, his, uh, he's going to do a non-QM show at 10 p.m. Um, p.m.? 10 p.m.? Yeah. Pacific. Wow. No, sorry, 10 a.m. Pacific. Oh. Thank, thank you. 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. That was a little more complicated math. You're going, you know, over a 12 hour, you know, noon period there. That, that switch over three hours. But um, so he, he's been great. So he's at Angel Oak. He's been uh, talking. He's like Angel's kind of one of the first innovators with non QM. And um, they've been having some fun times with this uh, current time. So uh, they have a lot to say. So um, I ha I read another article where they were talking about the home prices have sta are stabilizing, but they're predicting stability in 2023. So again, if you look for it, that messaging is out there more than I've seen recently. And it's important for us to focus on that so that we're having intelligent conversations with our borrowers, right? Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, the thing is that there, what I think we're not going to see, and I think this is what the Fed is trying to control, with the high rates is they don't want to see where we're seeing 7% appreciation in a month with home taxes. That's not stable and it's not, uh, you can't manage, you can't, it's just, it's way out of whack. It's not uh, sustainable. Yeah, it's Correct. not sustainable. That's the word I was looking for. Thank I you. I know. You're um, welcome. You're welcome. Um, yeah, he's, he's absolutely right. I mean, none of us like 30%. Well, I mean, some ding dong might've, but the rest of us were thinking, holy moly, this can't continue. And so this is, it again, like I have a sibling who is just like, every time he sees me, he's like, Audrey, I told you, I told you, look, this house in my neighborhood, it was, you know, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, you can't look at the snapshot of what happened two months ago. It's year over year. That's how we really look at a market, right? Like what's not what's happening in the last three seconds, but it's a longer period of time that gives you a better sense of what is the direction really is. And so anyway, I just roll my eyes. I had, a, I had uh, someone, uh, another loan officer say, yeah, whenever someone buys real estate for the first year, they're an idiot. For the fifth year, they're brilliant. That's right. That's right. Well, and again, unless you have bought or sold, you have gained and lost absolutely nothing. Remember right. that. Read nothing. Um, I just want to make sure that people, again, we have NHB, which is the home builder sentiment and existing home sales still this week. So again, do not get complacent. Just keep watching and, and making sure that lock in if you, if you've got somebody who's, I mean, don't dilly dally around with that. I mean, if obviously if you locked on Wednesday night, you're definitely crying on Thursday, maybe even Monday, but in normally right now it's locking, you know, just to make sure that everyone's protected. Um, so with that. Oh yeah. And actually I want to add to that. You can always renegotiate your lock when it goes down. Always. Drop, always. That's a, that's a big word. Yeah, maybe not always. Maybe, maybe not always. Yeah, yeah. But a lot of times you can renegotiate some of those locks. You can't get, you know, the current market, but you can get, you know, a step down. So you're actually much better off locking. Well, especially in this market. Um, right. So I, but I, you know, one of the things I talk about with my clients is, and again, like Thursday being the aberration on this, but I tell them, I'm like, we're all making commitments here. You know, it is, again, we are promising you and you are promising the lender you're going to deliver that loan, right? And that circle is really important. I call it the circle of trust from meet the, the Fockers. And if something gets broken in there, then the whole system gets broken. And then we, you know, then the whole, it has to change. So make sure your clients are on board with, they too are making a commitment and um, and so that they understand this is not just a one-way street. So I don't know why Kevin just muted himself, but I don't, uh, there he goes. There he goes. Um, all right, Kevin, what else we got? Oh, yep. next oh, week. Just a reminder, get your, your guesses in because- Yes, get your guesses in. I know. Get those guesses. I know. Yeah. 
I know now we have so many people we gotta we, we need a really good prize um we're we're working on that so um I know tell us what you think the prize should be for, and don't you dare say eight million dollars I will beat you but we'd be you know what do you think a good prize is Kevin and I have an idea of what we're doing but um because there's so much interest in this I just think it's it would be um well it's number one I good. think they need to be part of the show I oh. think you need to allow them to come on the show. And We've talked about that, guys. actually. Yes, yes that, is that should yes. definitely be part of the prize. So that would be an enticement for some people, and that some people would be scared out of their minds to do this. So uh, <laughs> we would work with whatever your response to that is. <laughs> oh, a pivot, a pivot party. What? I love that. Derek said we should have a pivot party. Oh, my yeah. goodness, right? Um, yeah, but that's <laughs> definitely a, a drinking game for for Derek. Somebody wants a, a beach house, which I'm oh. all, yeah. Oh my God. So, oh my God. Somebody says we make them laugh. I don't know why, like what we're, tr we try to be as dry as possible. <laughs> That's my middle name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. So next week, um, same next time. Week we're going to talk a lot about the uh, formula. Cause I think the limits of the announcements going to be somewhere right. Okay. Up there. Well, can't help himself. He just cannot. He's oh, very excited. My. What? He's excited. He's so excited. So anyway, we will look forward to seeing you next week. And then the week afterwards, we have um Julianne. Oh Lord, with the um she's FH, uh, FHA Deputy Assistant Sec uh, Commissioner, I think. So anyway, FHA. She's so much fun. I Is love it Gordon. Her. Is what? that Gordon? Is her last name Gordon? No, oh my God. I, I'm going right. to, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, maybe we can cut this part out. That'd be great. Anyway, if you yeah. missed anything, check us out on YouTube. Go to our website, www.mortgagepros.com, mortgagepros411.com. And we will see you next week. And thank you guys. Our list is growing. Keep sending your friends to us. Make sure that you are liking us on Facebook and joining us on LinkedIn. Um, we're getting it together. So we are so thankful for everybody who's hung in there with us. And Laura, thank you so love much for always being such a little bright, shiny love, light for us. Love you guys. You're doing amazing work. Keep crushing it. All right. Mwah. Bye guys. Have a great week. Bye, Kevin. Bye.